Welcome to Lesson 4C, Translation, Rotation, and Vorticity. In this lesson, we'll discuss some fundamental types of fluid element motion, or deformation. We'll define the property of vorticity, and we'll do some examples. There are four fundamental types of fluid element motion, or deformation. The first one is translation. The fluid element simply moves from one place to another. The second one is rotation, where the fluid element simply rotates. For these first two, there is no deformation, just motion. The last two involve deformation. We can have linear strain, in which the fluid element stretches. Here I show it stretching in the horizontal direction only, but it can stretch in any arbitrary direction. Finally, we have shear strain, in which the fluid element shears. We can see shearing going on in this case. We drew all of these in the 2D plane, but you can imagine these motions and deformations occurring three-dimensionally as well. These last two do have deformation. What makes fluid mechanics difficult is that all four of these can occur simultaneously in a fluid flow. A particle can translate, rotate, and strain all at the same time. We define these same movements and deformations in solid mechanics, but in fluid mechanics we prefer to use rates rather than these motions and deformations themselves. That's because this is a continuous process with fluids. These motions and deformations are going on constantly in a fluid flow. So let's look at the rate of each of these four. I'll do only the first two in this lesson. Rate of translation. It should be pretty clear that the rate of translation is the velocity vector, how fast the particle is moving and in what direction. By the way, I use particle and element interchangeably. In Cartesian coordinates, we have dx particle dt i plus dy particle dt j plus dz particle dt k. Well, this is by definition u, this is by definition v, and this is by definition w, which is just the velocity vector, which is a field variable in a fluid flow. To illustrate in a 2D plane, this distance would be dx particle, and this distance would be dy particle. The dimensions of velocity are, of course, length over time. The units of the magnitude of velocity are typically meters per second. Now let's look at the rate of rotation of a fluid element. We use Greek letter omega for the rate of rotation. I won't derive this here. You can see the derivation in the textbook. Omega is a vector that turns out to have these three components in Cartesian coordinates. This is the angular velocity vector. The dimensions of omega are that of velocity over distance. When you take a y derivative, for example, the denominator has a dimension of length. So the dimensions are 1 over time, which is different than that of velocity. Omega is made up of a number of spatial derivatives of velocity. Typical units of the magnitude of omega are 1 over second. Now let's define vorticity. The vorticity vector is the curl of the velocity vector. You get that by using the right-hand rule. My cousin Dud Cymbala will demonstrate the right-hand rule. Okay. A cross B equals... No, Dud, use your right hand, not your left oh, hand. Oh, okay. A cross B equals C. <laughs> I get it. Thank you, Dud. If you do the math on this, it turns out that zeta is 2 omega. Vorticity is twice the angular velocity of a fluid particle or fluid element. So its dimensions are the same as that of omega. There's just a factor of 2. And typical units are also the same. Be careful with this factor of 2, especially since some authors use omega for vorticity instead of the Greek letter zeta. So this factor of 2 can really be problematic. Since vorticity is just twice the angular velocity, vorticity is a measure of rotation of a fluid particle. Namely, if zeta is 0, the flow is irrotational. And if zeta is not 0, the flow is rotational. Since we already have the rate of rotation or angular velocity vector up here, we just multiply by 2 to get the vorticity vector. Here's the vorticity vector in Cartesian coordinates. We can also write it in cylindrical coordinates. We get some extra 1 over r's occurring. And notice that our unit vectors are in the r, theta, and z directions, er, e theta, and ez. This is for the coordinates r, theta, z, with corresponding velocity components ur, u theta, and uz. Now some physical examples. In a boundary layer where viscous forces are very important, the flow is rotational. Zeta is not zero. But outside the boundary layer where viscous forces are not that important, the flow in that region is irrotational. Zeta equals zero. To illustrate, suppose the fluid element is a smiley face. In this irrotational outer flow, the fluid particle remains in the same orientation and does not rotate. In the rotational part of the boundary layer, where there's a large velocity gradient, the fluid particle rotates as it translates. 
Therefore, we call this a rotational region of the flow. For our second example, consider solid body rotation or rigid body rotation. This flow is rotational. In fact, zeta is 2 omega everywhere in the flow field. Vorticity is a constant. Our fluid particle rotates at the exact same rate as the rigid body rotation. This is what the velocity field looks like. U theta is omega r. This would be analogous to a merry-go-round or a roundabout, where the people rotate as they revolve around in a merry-go-round, looking from the top. A line vortex, which is similar to a tornado, also has circular streamlines, but the velocity field is very different than solid body rotation. Instead of increasing with radius, u theta decreases with radius like some constant over r for a line vortex. We say line vortex because this is two-dimensional in this plane and nothing changes out of the plane or into the page. As the fluid elements revolve in their circular path, they do not change their orientation. In other words, they don't spin. So this flow is irrotational. Two of my students, Twins, Duck, and Dick Dynamics, will demonstrate these two flows using some visual aids that two former students created for me. Okay, Duck and Dick, we're ready to roll. Turn your wheels around. Now start rotating them. What do you observe, Duck? As I rotate, the arrows rotate right with the wheel. What about you, Dick? As I rotate the wheel, these arrows stay straight up. They don't rotate at all. I guess that's why they call it irrotational. Thanks, Duck and Dick. Now let's do an example problem. We're given a two-dimensional velocity field in the xy plane. There's no flow in the z direction, and there's no time in this equation, so it's also steady. The question is posed, is this flow rotational or irrotational? Well, we can either calculate omega or zeta. They differ by just a factor of two. Here's the equation for omega in Cartesian coordinates. Since w is zero, this term is zero. By the way, when I cross things out, I like to put the reason I cross it out in parentheses below. I strongly encourage you to get into this habit. It justifies why we're setting this term to zero. Later on, when you look at your notes, it'll help you remember why you crossed out certain terms. Since it's 2 dv is not a function of z, so that term goes away as well. Same thing here and here, but we do need to analyze these terms. From the given velocity vector, we see that u equal 2xy and v equal negative y squared. So what is del v del x? Well, x does not appear in the expression for v, so this is zero because v is not a function of x. What about del u del y? Well, when we take a partial derivative, we treat the other variables as constants. So del u del y is simply 2x. So for this velocity field, omega is 0i plus 0j. We have 2x with a negative sign and a 1 half, which gives negative xk. Thus, omega is negative xk, and vorticity is simply twice that. In conclusion, since zeta is not zero, this flow is rotational with the vorticity vector parallel to the z direction. Let's do another example. Again, we have a two-dimensional velocity field with this velocity vector. We're asked to calculate the rate of translation and the rate of rotation. Well, the rate of translation is just the velocity vector, so the answer is already given up here. V equal 3xi minus 3yj, or the components are u equal 3x, v equal negative 3y, and w equals zero. Now we calculate the rate of rotation and the vorticity. Since w is zero, the first term goes away. Any derivatives of z are zero in a 2D flow, so these terms go away. And again, w is zero. Since v is negative 3y, del v del x is zero. And since u is 3x, it's not a function of y, so del u del y is zero. Thus, omega is zero, and zeta is also zero. Unlike the first example, this flow is irrotational. As a fluid particle translates in the flow, it does not rotate. One final comment as you watch these videos, I try to distinguish the Greek letter zeta from the Greek letter rho, so make sure you don't confuse these two variables. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos.